Hello, Captain Marvel fans. Hello, Dan Merle. Hello, Ross Cornett. It's very good to see you today. Yes. We have a spoiler review of Captain Marvel right here, right now on Screen Junkies News. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, which why would you want to be spoiled if you haven't seen the movie? Check out now. Go see the film. Come back and discuss with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we already put our spoiler-free review, which has our broad thoughts about the film, up earlier this week. Yes. Um, but now we're just going to dive into some of the nitty-gritty particulars of this film and uh, what worked, what didn't, but also what does this mean kind mm -hmm. of for the future of the MCU. So do you want to kick us off with some of the things that you thought um, specifically that weighted in to how you felt about the film in total, some of the choices. Sure. It's it's weird because you, you do, we do these reviews at different stages. Mm -hmm. uh, you were able to see the film a little bit before I was, so you got to sit with it for a little bit. Our non-spoiler review, I had literally just gotten back from seeing it, so I was like fresh off it a couple hours. I've now, it's been a few days since I've seen it. I've been sick and sit and, and chew over a little things. Uh, I haven't really approached it in my mind any differently. It, it, to be honest, it's sort of faded a mm -hmm. lot over the last few days. I just think that it's still, part of it is, I just still don't really feel like they had a great handle on mm -hmm. the character. Um, partly because of the structure of the story, because half of the movie of her not knowing who she is, they then really couldn't impart a lot of knowledge about who she was. And then by the second half, when you're able to start doing that, you also have to service a big finale, a big action scenes, yeah. everything else. Inevitably. So I, I still feel like that's a, that's a fundamental flaw of the movie, is it's just not yet very confident in who the character is, which is unusual. Yeah. For Marvel. They usually, that's the one thing they kind of already have in yeah. hand. So that's sort of what has set in for me is it's it's almost kind of a blank in the sense that like it introduced the character. She's now a presence in the MCU and that's its main function for yeah. me looking back on it. it. It feels to me in, in, you know, we talked a lot about sort of the, the structure and what was working structurally and what wasn't working structurally for mm -hmm. us and, and what we could, felt could have been improved. Um, in order to better to tell the story, to increase the tension, mm -hmm. um, to increase an understanding of who she is with, with some dynamic choices. Uh, right now it feels like a little bit that she was set up, this movie is entirely made to set up the fact, and this had been my concern going in, that she is very, 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 very powerful. Mm -hmm. So that by the time we meet her again, and, and this is not spoiling anything because they've made it very clear with that beeper at the end yeah. of well, that's Infinity War. It's a spoiler War. review too, doesn't matter. And it's a spoiler screw review, you. yeah. If you're still watching, not screw you, but just you're gonna get spoiled. You're gonna get spoiled, the spoiler review. Obviously she shows up in the end credit scene and she is definitely an end game, mm -hmm. definitely the Avengers have called her. Certainly she's gonna be a big part mm -hmm. um, of solving the Thanos problem. So th this movie felt ultimately to me that it was a chapter um, largely to service that knowledge for the Marvel fans. It's, it's an episode of a television show. Yeah. That, that's the purpose. And I think that Kevin Feige, we talk about Marvel's however three year, four year plan and the fact that this movie was announced a few years before mm -hmm. it came out in continuity with where it is. And a lot of times that works out because like they'll have a Thor movie and they don't really know what it is, but Ragnarok kind of hit at the right time where the character can sort of reinvent himself yeah. and, and roll into Infinity War and you can have those big consequential things. They moved in humans, that was a good move because yes. the humans have no role in the current. Mm -mm. That, was a, that was a good idea to move in humans. I feel like putting Captain Marvel here in the chronology is an example of where their long-term plan maybe backfired a little bit because going into Endgame, and particularly with what was done at the end of the last Avengers film, even fans of this movie, even fans of Captain Marvel, yeah. I don't know how many of them really are going to go into Endgame looking for a Captain Marvel story or looking for her to enhance her role in the MCU. Mm -hmm. I think what most people are, are, are looking at, are going, looking forward to is how is this going to service and conclude the characters that we know? Yeah, exactly. And my worry is that by planning this far in advance and saying like, well, Captain Marvel, she's got to be an end game because we either have to set the movie in the past and then the case is why hasn't she been called when the biggest threat literally the humanity's ever faced is present or we set it in the present, which she's going to be there because it's in the present. Yeah. You've established that the character already exists when Endgame. You're almost you're forced to put her in the movie. Whereas I think if they had said we're gonna we're, Captain Marvel is gonna get her standalone movie after 
yeah. end game. That's going to be the maybe July release where Spider-Man Homecoming or Far From Home is now. Then you have that option as your ma- as as the MCU takes shape in the next two years. You can say like, you know what, maybe let's hold off. Let's let's introduce her after as kind of a new banner hero because I just I'm a little worried about how she's going to be integrated into this film when it already has so much on its plate. Yeah, I agreed. And and I think the other big thing is that while there are going to be people that go to see Endgame and are invested in these characters that we've grown to know and love for all these years mm-hmm. that don't see Captain Marvel. And then she's really going to be a deus machina <laughs> because she's just going to show up and be able to do anything she wants. And so let's which is already problematic for any character. For just this one movie, yeah. For, for just this one movie. So I, I I have concerns about that too, and then my my larger concern is the is the tension and release uh, points in in Endgame itself, where it's like if we went into Endgame at the end of Infinity War, not mm-hmm. knowing how they were going to solve this thing, truly, how are you going to solve this thing? Um, th- suddenly, that raises the stakes for that movie. But if I know exactly how you're going to solve this <laughs> thing, because this movie told me how you're going to solve it. Mm-hmm. And I hope it's the cat, because that's the only oh, twist gosh. they had. Let me tell you why. Because <laughs> I'm kind, I'm 90% kidding. Uh-huh. Um, but part of me would love the idea of an end shot of the Avengers just holding up the cat. Um, but, but the only reason why is that's the only twist left, right? right? Because if it's her, that's not a twist anymore. I know it can be her. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why I know it can be her, because the, she is powered essentially by the Tesseract, right. which means that she is powered. No human being should be able to take that power. First of all, I have questions around that, and I think a lot of people will have questions around that. Um, like, no human being, as they've established in previous films, should be able to go near or touch. And it's it's diluted power because it wasn't the Tesseract itself. It was the engine that was powered right. by the Tesseract. So I kind of get it. But still, that gives her the only shot to go up against Thanos, um, who has the Infinity Stone. Like, maybe... Maybe she, right? Like maybe, yeah. That seems to be it. Here's my point with the only available twist: the cat, the Flurkin, who's apparently incredibly powerful, mm-hmm. swallowed the Tesseract, the actual Tesseract, and oh. then spit it back up. That mm-hmm. means the cat, period, like factually, is more powerful than any of the Avengers besides Vision, yeah. who, who has an As Infinity Stone in his head, said, or did, or did. Right, so so there you go. If it I, comes down to the I know cat. You guys, I, I, look, I'm kidding, <laughs> but it's still better than it just being so anticlimactic if it's just her. Yeah. I, I, Not I mean, that I don't like her, by the way, as a character. This isn't have, to shit on Captain Marvel. They have to integrate her, though. They, 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 they can't. She can't just come in and be this all-powerful thing that is the one thing that can defeat Thanos. They have to integrate her into the greater story. And I think the more that you bring in things like the Tesseract, when they brought the Tesseract in, I was like, oh, that's a cute little Easter egg. It's not an Easter egg. But then when I realized that it is super important and it becomes this this plot point, uh, again, it's a thing of now they have created all of this need to go back and re-explain things that had already been settled. There was already this sort of established chronology that Captain America, the Tesseract, it was in the ocean. Yeah. Howard Stark found it right and then shield had it years so, later and it's like you don't that, that's fine so, now so here's my question how did marvell and we'll get into that yes get it was it with a deal with howard stark to 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 because she convinced him with his aviation interests that it would be she's experimenting with light speed and that's going to serve everyone this, exactly. is that it maybe this is what i mean this is what you do when you go yeah. back and you kind of it's a question the I tesseract have. everything with the ether the tesseract that yeah. had all been sort of their infinity stones they're in thanos's gauntlet done that, done now you're relitigating it, and now you have to go through. And and if you think that you don't have to do that, then you don't know your fan base because when you bring the test rack back and it's in and Annette Bening's hands in the '90s, that is the next question. Yeah. How did she get it? Where did it come from? Did it come from Howard Stark? Did Howard Stark leave it in the ocean? Uh, you know, in, in, in First Avenger, did she find it? She did she steal it? And that becomes now something that you've got to address in a further. And you're creating work for yourself down the road. And 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 I think, as I mentioned before, that when you have an unlimited amount of space to go, but then you start drawing boxes and circles around where you can go, well, that also limits your creativity. Yeah. And so I I get why oh, was it going to have the test rack and we're going to tie it to the past of the MCU. You're also creating more work to explain how and why that happened. 
And and I don't think that that's compelling enough of a story to be like, well, that's going to drive the sequel. Like that's a that's a that's that's a trivia thing. It's it's, it's it'll be a throwaway line, but it's something that you also have to go back and but, explain. But you have to go back and explain it. And and now and now I think you've set us up. And maybe this is a bait and switch. That's my hope. Mm -hmm. Is that again, like to me, it's very. I, I, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna stop talking about the Flurkin, but I do think it's interesting that it would swallow the Tesseract because that that amplifies the idea that this is an incredibly powerful alien. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be able to touch it. You know, um, a living thing should not be able to touch it, really. Yeah. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I know, I know you will. But let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the idea of, of. I think fans will probably be talking about Annette Benning's character, mm -hmm. the dual role, sure. as Marvell right. and the Supreme Intelligence. Now, clearly, Marvell is not coming back, um, and Marvell's uh, motivations have been. Uh, used differently here. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Intelligence. Could the Supreme Intelligence come back? I guess. I guess. They were both kind of throwaways to me. It was mentor, villain. Yeah. And you have such a great actor in that role. And yeah. Benning, and she was good. She was great. She was great, but again, you... Uh, it's, it's just sort of a toss. It reminds me a little bit of... I, I in, our, in our non spoiler review, I compared this to Captain America, the first Avenger. Yeah. And I think this is another place where you can compare it. Is she reminded me of how they dealt with Red Skull in that film, which is you take a character that has a deep lore and should have a very significant piece in this character's backstory and largely reduce them to the villain of the week. A plot device. A plot device. Yeah. And so I, I think that I think that they will bring her back somehow. I Either hope through so, further because it's flashbacks. Annette it's Annette Benning. Through further flashbacks somehow, I think they are gonna bring her back. But it's another example it's an example of uh, this is a big character, particularly for fans of Captain Marvel. Marvel is yeah. is a big corner piece to that character. And I and I feel like while the performance was good from Annette Benning, I don't know how well the movie serviced that character beyond like she's a mentor. Yeah, I agree. And 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 here's the other thing is the here's why I'm hoping they're doing some kind of bait and switch with Captain Marvel coming in and saving the day, mm -hmm. um, is because this movie in and itself was kind of a bait and switch in the following ways. One, everyone presumed that Jude Law was going to be Marvel, right? It seemed that way. That from way, the everyone thought, oh, he's Marvel. He's yeah. definitely Marvel. Right, and and it wasn't, which which is good because mm -hmm. if we had just known that going in, that would have sucked. And the other thing, and the, I think the one of, if not the biggest thing that people are going to be talking about besides the Star Act coming out of this. Is the scrolls mm -hmm. like complete retcon you know what i mean like they're good now they're they're like these refugees which i thought was a really interesting twist because everyone was saying oh it's very clear from captain marvel that they're now setting up secret invasion mm -hmm. right which maybe they still are but if they do they'll actually have to do it in a very nuanced and i think interesting way which is in war, there are no absolutes. There very rarely. I think there's a couple of wars where there were, um, but generally speaking, there are no absolutes. There are, there are embattled sides, right. and you often have to be on one or the other. But but each have a point of view, and no one's purely evil or good. Which I actually think is pretty interesting for a comic book movie to have comic book series to have to do that. And maybe that's a subversion of expectations. Maybe they knew that when it was announced that Scrolls were in this film, that they're like, oh, well, Scrolls are going to be the next big bad of the MCU. Yeah. Which perhaps they are, but not this group of Scrolls. Not this group this of is Scrolls. A, this is a, this is, these are nice Scrolls. Yes. These, these are, and, and that twist, that twist it's, it's again something, that's, it's how I feel about Nick Fury, the characterization, which we'll get to, I'm sure. Oh, we will. Meaning it works for this movie. Yeah. Nick Fury's characterization works in this movie because in the confines of just a singular film, it makes sense. The scroll twist also works in this movie. Yeah. The question is, when you expand the universe, does it work for the universe? Well, and that's and I'm the, I'm the biggest proponent that you should judge a movie based on its own terms. Um, and, and this movie should be too. However, I do think you have to pay attention to if you establish something in one film, does it then violate something that you're going to set up in other films? Like, this is why I say, like, I'm not going to discount Samuel Jackson and Nick Fury in this film based on how I think his characterization compares to Nick Fury in other films. Yeah. He works in this film. I love his performance in this film. He's funny. The character is funny. I just also acknowledge it does not jive with any other piece version. of Nick Fury yeah. that we have ever seen in the MCU before. It yeah. does not match at all. So so let's talk about Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. This, this is the only, the, my final point on the scrolls is I, I think a lot of fans are going to be upset by this, right? Um, however, I think there is an opportunity in there 
to to expand in the expanded universe and the further exploration of them to first of all Ben Mendelsohn was one of my favorite parts of the movie I thought it was mm-hmm. great um, is is really to explore is a a truth um, that comic books often portray absolute good versus absolute evil um, and I think getting getting into the idea that that's not the case that it's just a war. And in war, uh, a lot of pain happens, and there are people that are fighting for reasons that mm-hmm. maybe you don't agree with, but th- are understandable upon it. Like, if these really are refugees and they want to fight for their lives, then you get it. Yeah. They're going to fight in any way they can, um, which I think is actually an opportunity, but I know a lot of fans will hate that. Let's talk about the shield. First of all, I have so many questions coming out of this movie. Like, here are just a few top-line okay. questions. Sure. One... What the hell were you doing in between the time that you met her and then got Iron Man? Like, what was Shield before that? Did you, we were we pitched today a series a, a show that was just about all like the bad dates of trying to find the right superhero. Right. Two in the invasion of New York, you were like, wait, there are aliens. That changes the whole game. You knew there were aliens. You met them in the nineties. Three. In the invasion of New York, which is the biggest crisis, and follow-up invasions where people were, like, dropping countries, small (laughs) countries, onto the Earth. Why didn't you use that beeper then? That's not enough of an emergency for you. It was very unclear you were going to win. This is what I mean, again, when you establish something in the past that fits into a greater universe, but the rules of of what you establish would then dictate questions about why you didn't do something because the, the real world answer is the reason that Nick Fury didn't call Captain Marvel in the Avengers is that, that didn't they exist. didn't know that Captain Marvel <laughs> was going to exist. They certainly didn't know that Nick Fury had a modified two-way pager that could summon Captain Marvel from the cosmos. So, I mean, that's the answer to that question. But again, add that to the list of how did Nick Benning get the Tesseract? Yeah. Why didn't Nick Fury call her in the event? These are the things that just you're going to have to now begin to answer. Yeah. And if you want to do that, as as if you're Kevin Feige, if you're the architect of the Marvel Universe and you want to set up those kinds of questions, that's your prerogative. From from my experience as a filmmaker, per, uh, filmmaker, as a film goer personally and a film talker even more so, those are not the kind of questions that intrigue me yeah. to be discovered in later sequels. I don't want to know the, the or I don't want to have to think about the the little technical details, but they're questions that well, you well, bring up yeah. canonically in your yeah. own films. Because I agree. What is it that made Loki dropping a wormhole from the sky not with emergency an, with a enough. planet destroying yeah. army not enough of an emergency to say like I'm gonna give it a shot yeah maybe she'll come maybe she won't and maybe that's the answer we'll get I tried that's the flashback and, I called and you and the beeper wasn't working and and the signal wasn't working mm-hmm. or she was off doing this other thing she couldn't hear whatever that's maybe he did retcon, try right? that's that is an absolute retcon here's interestingly yeah. enough the thing that I think fans are gonna have the biggest reaction to is not that I think it's gonna be his eye. Okay, yes. I think that's going to be the thing that they're just not pleased with. Anti. Yes. For me. For you. Okay. Not that that is a joke that you that joke works again in the movie. Okay, fine. Oh, huh. Cat cat, cat scratch scratches fever. his eye. Yeah. Uh, but in the world In the world that is just so You want him to have this badass battle right that took his eye i'm just i or just never know somebody this, i'm sure someone kevin feige or whoever is going to once again pull the cloak of subversion of expectations over this and be like well yeah you expected it to be something badass but we subverted that expectation and it's really something funny i think that i i think that there's sometimes that that's valid and i think there's sometimes that that's just a cheap out for a decision that people didn't like yeah and i think it's stupid i think it was so dumb Be- because again the the one of the coolest parts of other films the one of the coolest moments of Captain America the Winter Soldier is when they're locked out of the systems and everything's going to blow up and Fury pulls up the eye patch and you you know and he, it's the first time you've seen the eye and he's just like ah see I've got my my retinal scan you didn't delete this one and it's just like it takes something out of that to know that like oh yeah that's the eye he lost when the cat scratched him yeah secondarily they also ugh, put my geek glasses on. <laughs> It's a flirt. Uh, they enough. established that uh, there are thumb <laughs> thumbprint scanners yeah. at the headquarters facilities and not retinal scanners. So yeah. why would he have a retinal scan of his good eye if there that technology wasn't even existent? Again, because they didn't think about that. Yeah. Back in, but this is the kind of I call it carelessness. Some people would say 
Well, I'll just say, but I call it carelessness that you have to avoid when you're doing a prequel like yeah. this. Is you're just setting up unanswerable or, or just. Or you're answering a thing that actually didn't need didn't answering. Didn't answer. You know, like for me, that was the one cat moment in the film that I didn't care for. Oh. I really did for a number and it's of reasons. Played as a joke. And like first of it's all, just it's like, just cat's a bad name. Oh, it's just a scratch, and then it cuts to the <laughs> scroll like. Mm -mm. Like uh -oh. I didn't like how it was played in the movie. Uh, and you've already if 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 you're trying to establish that the Florkin's really dangerous, done. Job you're like job done yeah. number of times. Like first when they put the little muzzle on it, which is frankly hilarious mm. um, to me. Mm -hmm. And then it can open up tentacles and eat a tesseract and humans, a number of them. Yeah. So it's clearly very dangerous. So I yeah I didn't care for that. Um, I have a question for you, Dan. Yes. So I'm a fan of Lee Pace as an actor. Yes. I do not understand. Poor Ronan in every movie Ronan. Like, why was Ronan in this movie? No reason for Ronan to be in this movie. And secondarily, it looked like, like not even ABC Ronan. It looked like, yeah. like basic cable from the 1990s Ronan. I, I don't know if they went with the look of the character because they thought that he was younger, so we're going to make him look younger. He looked like Lee Pace in blue makeup. Yeah. Ronan at least had a... He had a he had a detailed he had a look, look to, to him, him. Yeah. and this is just like a guy with blue face paint on. It looked like worse than Mystique. Yeah, the Jennifer Lawrence Mystique. I know. In the later films. In the one that's the trailer <laughs> like we the just new saw. One. Yeah. Um, again, this is just including uh, an older character because it's a prequel. So like, we're going to bring in other parts of the mythology, but you didn't know how to integrate it other than Ronan's in it. I mean, the only thing are they setting up because he goes like literally he shows up and he's like, I'm going to do a thing. And he's like, never mind, back up. Uh, but we'll be back for the girl, you know, essentially. Yeah. And are they just setting up that she was busy with Ronan? All these. I have no idea. It was just really weird because I was I really like Lee Pace and I think he's continually be, ten, he's just underused in this yeah. role. I, I hope he and Darth Maul are both in the hologram yeah, factory. Or it's, there's these weird Disney things that you see. Once you notice them, you can't. It's. I, I don't think the creative teams are talking to each other. It's just the water. It's this idea of bringing in an old villain, mainly through use of a hologram. They did yeah. it with Darth Maul and the and the yeah. Solo. They did it with Darth. Sorry, with mm -hmm. Ronan in this movie. Like there's little things, like these little trends that just pop up. Yeah. And one of them in this one was just that. It's like let's use the old villain, but this time he's a hologram for most of it. You actually do see Ronan in this one, but I agree. No, I, I no function in this uh, film. Jude Law. Um, in terms of his role here and mm -hmm. what we think about him moving forward. So we've talked about what, what I mean, I liked, uh, I, I really loved uh, Ben Mendelsohn. I really liked uh, Lasha Lashana Lynch, who plays mm -hmm. Maria Rambo, um, yeah. who, her daughter um, in the comics, who was in this film. I liked them both. And I thought they were really the emotional, connective heart of the film. Mm -hmm. Her daughter eventually becomes Captain Marvel. Mm. So... A question I had is that her daughter, by the time we meet Captain Marvel again, would probably be about 30, right? Yeah, it's probably about, about 20-ish years later. Yeah. Um, so could the actress, two questions, mm -hmm. could the actress who plays Maria in this film then play the daughter in the next one? And are they setting up a different Captain Marvel almost like as a backup plan <laughs> like, or a different Captain Marvel or separate Marvel. that's a question I don't think they're going to do anything about it in Endgame at all yeah. um, but it was interesting to me that that was there you know and that now by the time we meet her again she'd be an adult I wouldn't be surprised I, I think that it's very possible that they always had Jane Foster in mind potentially as a, a Thor yeah. a, a new Thor with Natalie Portman. I don't think that's the direction they ended up going, but yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if they had had those discussions and perhaps had cast with an eye toward, hey, Let's just by the way, Natalie in. Portman could do this if we wanted to do yeah. it. So they're always planning for the future. Yeah. They really are. It's, it's, I think it's possible. I think it's possible that that's the way that they want to go. I think it's just interesting that in this film, they set up a backup Captain Marvel. Potentially, yeah. And I don't know enough about how that would work, and they would probably have them both if they wanted to. It's just mm -hmm. interesting to me. Okay, back to the original question, Jude Law. Yes. Um, what did you think of that character, that portrayal, and do, do you think this is it for him in terms of the MCU? Maybe. I, I think that was, for me, his betrayal and the dynamic between he and, and Veers slash Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel yeah. should have been 
the heart of the movie in the sense that he is sort of coaching her in a philosophy one way and in, in, in actuality that's not that's not how she is destined to be a hero yes she's destined to be a hero by actually proving the inverse of that philosophy yeah he's telling her to let go of her emotions right. and what she needs to do is actually access them yes which, which on paper is a really interesting trajectory it is on paper and, and i think that's 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 where the film gave it stri- even their first scene together is a fight scene the mm-hmm. first time you see them they're doing the matrix thing of like talking and fighting and he's spouting exposition and spouting philosophy in the middle of this fight action position. scene fight position you know and, yeah. and everything where even as a as a viewer I, I was kind of like i i kind of need to know these people first i need to know who yeah. they are i need to know what this dynamic is you're 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 showing me yeah uh, this th- that they're fighting, but and you're tell you're telling me that they're a mentor, but but for that betrayal to fully land, the movie needed to have spent more time. I mean, how much screen time do they separate? Do they share before Very they're little. separated for the entire film? Yeah. And then you're asked when he comes back to jump right into this betrayal that she feels and this this showdown between them that proves that he's right or he's wrong and she's right. It's her moment. It's her yeah. hero moment. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's undermined by the fact that the movie was so concerned with so many other things that they gave that relationship such a short shrift when, in actuality, I think that's where the key to the film is. And they just didn't, they well, because, didn't do it properly. Well, they, the problem is they gave her three keys. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave her Annette Benning as a mentor, right. a, re, a true one. Um, they gave her, her and Maria as her best friend. That To me, that was the most effective yes. emotionally. And then they gave her Jude Law. To your point, if they had really um, honed in on the idea of some of, of this guy actually fighting for her because he really cares and actually wanting her to suppress her emotions because that's the only way he gets to keep her mm-hmm. and actually be invested in like, I, I, I need this to work or I'm going to have to eliminate this person and I don't want to do that. Um, and her in, a, in, in real duress because her emotions, because she's human, and he's asking her to be something that she's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and and um, th- if they had really done that and, and invested, invested, then the point where she discovers his betrayal and he has to then eventually give up on her would have had all of this weight, but it just didn't, um, which is sad. Did you ever, did you watch Battlestar Galactica? I, the, the, the new the, series? The, the new series. I did, yes. Okay, it's me too, and I loved it. So you remember when Starbuck and Apollo have the boxing match? Yes. It's one of my favorite episodes because there is so much weight and emotional baggage mm-hmm. that it, they are just pounding out of each other in this fight. And it's beautifully done and so emotional. It just, like, is heartbreaking. That's what that fight could have been if it mm-hmm. was constructed differently and at a different point in the film. And that final fight is really, it's actually really just constructed to be a punchline. Yeah. Which, again, okay, if that's the direction that you want to go, but I think by by taking that final confrontation and doing the Raiders, as I think you pointed out yeah. after you'd seen it, and Danielle also, it's just the Raiders of the Lost Ark joke. Yeah. It's the... I'm going to talk, and yeah, then I'm just going to get hit by a blast. And, uh, and you know why that happened in Raiders. Because he was, he was sick. He was sick. He was, yeah, he had, he had yeah. the squirts. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. He Sorry had the for squirts. The, he had the squirts. He did. It's, it's, it's foul, it but worked. it's the human body. It, it, that's what's called a happy accident. <laughs> exactly. He got sick and couldn't do the fight, and so he did one of cinema's most iconic moments instead. But that final showdown is yeah. really just a setup to that joke, to that yeah. punchline where... I think that you, they would have been better service to make that much more than that and much more meaningful than that. Yeah. But they had to go fly into space. They had to go look at Ronan. So they had to business. deal with the scrolls. They had to deal with Ben Mendelsohn. There's so much other business to do that they just sort of, it got the same amount of attention as everything else in the movie. Yeah. And that's not always the best case for somebody like myself that connects to a very strong core of character and story in a film. And yet, and yet I think constructed differently because my point is with Maria and her, that they didn't share a lot of screen time, but it just that worked. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes that's one of those things in a film where you don't know, you don't know until you actually have it. Yeah. Um, where the magic is going to happen, where it isn't. There were structural changes. I agree that could have happened. Um, and again, it, like I, I, I don't want the perception to be that that I won't speak for you, but that I am 
bagging on this film, not at mm. all. I think there's plenty in there that I like, plenty to be in, that's enjoyable. I enjoyed watching it. I wasn't miserable watching it. It didn't feel like a slog that I had to endure. That said, I'm not racing to the theaters to see it again, and I wish the Captain Marvel character herself had come out vividly and served well. I agree. I, I, I'm. This movie frustrates me, not because I hated it. I didn't hate it. I just found it to be very forgettable, very generic, very middle of the road. Um, and on top of that, I get even more frustrated when I'm, as I'm watching the film, I see places where I think it could have been better. Been better. Yeah. Not because it didn't give me what I wanted, but because there are inherent structural issues with character payoffs that I, as a viewer, I'm looking at and saying like, I really would have cared more if, if, if this had been established better, if that had been established better, or if they didn't. I had a big problem with the music in this film. The I most problems I've it. had with the music in a film since Suicide Squad. Yeah. I know it's the 90s. You don't have to remind me every five minutes by playing a 90s song that it's the 90s. And I really, really did not like the No Doubt song during the big oh, fight yeah. scene. That was playing silly. Just a Girl during her big fight scene is... A little on the nose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little on the nose. Yeah, I, I didn't care for that. But I didn't mind the music. I thought it was kind of fun, generally, other than that one moment. But I also think there was a little on the nose in general certain moments but there's a little needle drop in yeah. the in the supreme intelligence scene like there's literally a nirvana record playing yeah. for no reason yeah. for no reason other than like it's the 90s yeah by the way it's all over the place it's early 90s music it's mid 90s it's, it's 90 it's set, what years it's set in i think there might be some stuff from anachronistic. Past with some anachronistic stuff like it's it's you don't need to pander to me yeah and remind me what the 90s were and what the 90s sounded like I know that there is a younger audience that wasn't around during the 90s yeah. that, that might not know, but to people that were around in the 90s, and I think that that's a significant chunk of the audience, it feels like just hammering you in the head, like, yeah. you, do, you don't need to try to win me over by playing the hits of the day. Put that into the characters in the story, not the soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, I think for me the, the main point is is I, I think I want... I want to love all of these characters, mm -hmm. you know, and I want them to be served well, and I don't want any of them to be used strictly as a plot device. And my concern in this movie and coming, mostly coming out of this movie, is that sh she was, oh good. Yeah. Well, the construction industry started again. The building's again. concern as well yeah. is that we're gonna come out of this movie, <laughs> and the reason <laughs> that it was made was to to get to a plot point in Endgame. Yeah. And that, that does a disservice to Endgame, and it really does a disservice to Captain Marvel. Yeah. And my only hope, and that's why I brought up the scroll subversion, mm -hmm. is that they're baiting and switching and that it's not her mm. that's going to solve ultimate she'll probably be she'll be a part of the team. Sure. But it's not her that's gonna solve the Thanos problem specifically. And, and it'll be something that we can't and don't expect. That's my hope. Um, I joked about the cat. Again, it ate a tesseract is all I'm saying. But I don't think it's that. It should be the team members that we have invested in for 10, 11 years mm -hmm. coming together and equally being a part in this solution in surprising ways. Right. In order for that movie to pay off what they have invested in, which is no small amount of time and money and effort and 22 films. Yeah, 11 years. 11 years, 20 plus films. Yeah. Please don't let it be this. I, I agree. It's it's this should not because I don't like her. I I you know right no. I just want to be surprised. It's just it's 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 a character issue and it's it's this should not this should in an ideal world Captain Marvel would sort of be this would be a coronation of Captain Marvel yeah. as the standard bearer for the next phase of the films and yeah. it, and she feels more like an add on yeah because there's not a great out pouring for her to be this critical part of the solution in the next film not because of not because she's a woman or not because of the uh, of anything related to outside of the film because this is a new character and and it's and it's really boring when you you paint your your established characters into a corner like you said that's literally a deus ex machina yeah is when characters are painted into a corner and somebody literally comes from, from the, the sky, sky and solves the problem yes it is that's why people have such a an issue with that particular you can use it sometimes han solo was a great de deus ex machina because yeah. you didn't see it coming and yeah. it wasn't frustrating that he was the one that yeah got darth vader out of the way it was great he saved luke's 
Skywalker. Because that's not th this hero you set up, especially then. Yeah. Especially then, you know? But if 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 the solution to Cap and, and Hulk and Black Widow and Tony and Hawkeye is and all the these exact people hero is you just set up? Captain Marvel swoops in and beats Thanos, a lot of people are going to be very disappointed with that because that's not... I don't think that's the that's the payoff that we want no. with these characters. Not we don't want their all problem to be solved easily. Yeah, we, we want, want it to, to be hard. hard, and we want it to be necessary that all of them exist. Yes, um, I am keeping my fingers crossed along too. with you that 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 she is not being introduced just as a fix all or an easy solution on how to beat Thanos. That she either poses a an obstacle that yeah. makes it harder for them to do it, yeah. or that she works in a component that allows all of the established team members to work with her yeah. to solve this problem. Oh, I like the idea that she's an obstacle a lot, by the way. Like that maybe she's been so embedded with the Skrulls that mm -hmm. she's kind of team Skrull now, and that this is, okay, well, there's a whole, I just went on fan fiction <laughs> road, but I like that a lot as a very interesting choice, which doesn't counter out from the MCU going forward because no, not that's at all. but that would be very interesting. So fingers crossed, I have faith in the Russo brothers. Yeah. Um, and I have faith in Kevin Feige that that would not be the case, that they're that they're setting us up to believe that that's the case, mm -hmm. and it's not. Um, you let us know what you thought in the comments below. Again, in this review, we were really getting into the nitty gritty of it, but yeah. our overall broad thoughts about the structure of the film um, and the performances are in our spoiler review. So enjoy both, and let us know what you think here. Um, and and let's be heroic, let's, let's be nice, let's yeah. be thoughtful, let's engage with thoughtful critique on either side if you loved it if you didn't i'm actually very anxious to read the because as we're sitting here it's thursday the movie's not out yet uh i'm 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 hoping to find some good critique and conversation about the elements of this film that challenge the mythology the continuity because the conversation around it has been about so much about everything else sure. up to this point and I'm hoping that we can tap into some some fountains of like let's talk about the, the, the by the way there is a movie here yeah so let's talk about that let's, let's talk about let's the movie let's delve into this movie and I'm hoping that we can kind of tap into that cuz I'm very curious to hear what people think about it it's tie it's tie-ins what the, you know are they giving Marvel more credit down the road with some other things that worked for other people that didn't work necessarily as much for us like that's the kind of stuff I like to read so yeah. I'm hoping to see some of that looking forward to that and we will see you soon with more movie reviews sooner than you think maybe <laughs> <laughs>